My topic is basically lessons learned from failure of steel structures. And before start my lecture, I will thank Max Media, who have organized these kind of structures. Because in India, particularly in India, there is a very less uh, conferences on the, or the summit on steel structure compared to the concrete structures. And even in our students, if we ask uh, in which area you are like to uh, want to make a, a job, everybody is, says that is a concrete. Because the reason is that uh, in most of the institutes, uh, basically the steel structures is a single semester course, except I can say Jadupur University, where we have a two semester course, full two semester course. And recently, I think you have heard that news that uh, even the degrees of IITs and NITs are not recognized by where? I think yesterday's paper it has come because uh, uh, our India government is have a, uh, have a uh, they want a NB accredited that is national uh, NB it should be a, uh, NB accredited otherwise the course will not be validated by other countries and when we come to the course structures for uh, these NB accreditations we have seen that you have to comply some of the uh, courses which are not related to engineering. And that's why our course structure is to be changed. But still, in our Jadavpur University, we have tried to maintain the two semester steel structure design, uh, even after these NBA systems. That is, uh, I think uh, if we have a single semester uh, steel structures, there will be a, some problem because uh, if the students are not properly learned about the steel structures, there will be a problems in your say, professional fields, I think. Now, let's go to the topics. Uh, I think uh, there is a lot of discussions has been made on both on merits and demerits of your steel structures. I'm just skipping these two slides. And I have uh, just for my sake of interest, I go to the Wikipedia and I've collected some data. Uh, that is, what are the number of uh, structural failures and uh, the collapses? And basically, these are the building and man-made structures, major failures. And if you can see that every year, there is a failure of structures we happen uh, in, your, uh, in our uh, engineering structures. You can see that uh, different uh, your in the years you are getting different numbers of failures. Now, some relevant points is that the learning from failures of the structures is the important facets of your engineering educations because if we can know the what is the reasons of failure, it is a very important, uh, you can say that it is an important learning from that. But one of the uh, problem is that, particularly in India, we don't get informations properly. If there is any failure, there is some inquiry committees forms, but you don't get what is the final outcome, and there is no report also. So the reason is that, or in some cases, you can go, cannot accessible to the report also. So let us uh, think of what are the possible failure modes of the steel structures. Normally, the varietal of ductile fracture of your steel members, mostly the connections. Sometimes you can get the global buckling of the structures of the members. Sometimes you can get a local buckling of the members. Excessive deformations uh, of the plastic deformations. Loss of geometric stability and the fatigue failures. Something has been discussed regarding this fatigue failure. Uh, next come to the causes of failure of the steel structures. Just I have to jot down these things. First thing is the poor communications between the designer and the professionals. Poor communications between the fabricator and the erectors. Bad workmanships. Compromise in professional ethics. It is a very important part of our uh, present day. Complexity of the codes and the specifications. In our graduate times, our IS-800 is a very small one, and even IS-875 wind code, it's only two or three pages. And nowadays, the both IS-875 and 800s become very heavy, 
It is very difficult to teach in our students with a very small time of two semesters also. Sometimes we have to skip. Sometimes you have to steal the students you learn in your industry because it is impossible as because you know that uh, over in Bob, you know, IS 875, uh, 2007, it is a very difficult, mostly it is a formulations, but we try to give some of the important points so that it can, they can learn this, in your, you know, or so that they can apply these clauses of the different parameters in their future lives. Compressed design and construction time, this is one of the important factors. Everybody times, uh, everybody wants that your project should be completed within a very short time. Other common causes of failures are the lack of appropriate professional design and construction experiences. Sometimes we can see that uh, very uh, young engineers are started designing without taking any help of others using the softwares. Right? They use softwares, but without knowing the basics, they are doing professional practice, and for that, there is a lot of failures has been occurs. Unwarranted belief in calculations and specified loads and materials properties. Inadequate preparation and review contract and soft drawing. Poor training of field inspectors. Now I am discussing some of the uh, uh, your failures, basically this is collected from books and some of the reports which are available from the international journals and reports. This is basically, I have uh, made in a two or three phases. The first is one is the static loading under construction phase. This is the floor deck of a three-story commercial building. And this has been designed by your uh, computer software. And when the uh, design software, the data is transferred to the drawing, you see there is a garter about, about 114, uh, 1400 meter high. The thickness has been changed from 12 to 7. 7 was the well diameter, well size, but your web's, uh, your uh, web thickness was 12. But when the data is transferred from your actual, uh, uh, your uh, stat design to the uh, drawings, it has been uh, changed to 7 mm to 12 mm. That is, uh, sorry, it is changed from, changed to 7 mm instead of 12 mm. So naturally there will be some buckling. So this is due to this, there is some buckling has been takes place in the members. We have soon. Next, this is a uh, failure of a roof truss in sports arena, uh, where the trusses has been, has been placed over the columns, the span is 50 meters. Uh, one of the contractor has been given to construct the trusses only. The next contractor has been given to give a seating. When the next contractor comes, what he has seen that uh, there is a problem of uh, crane movement to place the seat. So what he has done, he has removed some of the bracings between the two trusses to get a clearance, right? So you see that the, uh, in this figure, he has removed all the bracings or the parlins, whatever you can say, that uh, remove it so that he can move the cranes. Naturally, there's a collapse between the trusses. So such behavior could be eliminated by proper interaction with your supervisions. Next is a very common, is a very uh, PT contractor has uh, taken the job of a roof truss. Right? It is a span of 30 meter. It is resting on column at Howrah. Uh, the, uh, the truss has been fabricated at the site, but, and it is uh, lifted by your crane without putting any stiffness along the lateral directions, which is required. Actually, structurally it is not required, but for erection purpose, these members, that is the stiffness is to be provided. Otherwise, there will be a buckling. Right? As the contractor has, uh, has uh, no knowledge about these kind of things, and uh, yeah, when you have uh, started the lifting, it becomes a bent in the lateral directions, and due to this, there is a failure of these truss buckles laterally. Next one is a failure of a pre-engineered building, which is uh, mostly now it is used during erections process. The same process that due to the owner regulations, 
to cease the construction activity after the sunset, the bracing connecting the rafter could not be erected. They have erected the bracings between the columns, but the connecting the rafters, it is not possible uh, due to the time constraint. And they have only connected with your, um, some uh, uh, wires are like that. But due to the small winds, again, you can see this figure that this uh, raptor has been undergone severe lateral torsional buckling under combined action of wind and its self-weight. I think it is uh, known to everybody that the flyover collapse at Kolkata. This is, uh, there's a lot of uh, controversies are there. Buckling of cantilever steel girders has been noticed uh, due to the bad overmancies and the poor quality of materials. This is again a collapse of a generator room at Chennai. It's a very small generator room. You can see that the error takes place uh, in between the splashing of these your columns. Columns has been placed just by rotating 90 degrees. So wrong alignment of rectangular, uh, rectangular uh, steel columns was one of the key reasons for the collapse of the 30 feet tall hospital generator room under construction. This is uh, now come to the service stage, that is the static loading under service phases. This is a conveyor belt gallery at a height of 30 meters. And the major reason of this failure is the corrosion. Corrosion is basically uh, damage internally in a bolted joint carrying a steel cross beam in which conveyor belt gallery was hanging on its upper end. So uh, whenever you use any steel structures for a longer time, you have a regular maintenance. Otherwise, this kind of failures may happen. I think this is one of the important uh, failure of a Tacoma narrow bridges. Uh, I have a video which is, uh, I think it is not uh, time permits. Uh, I think it is a failure has been taken place. Uh, it is important uh, aspects of your structural engineering. It is a fails in 1940. At that time, we have no idea about your uh, structural failure of a, due to the aerodynamic effect. The cause of failure is the lack of proper understanding of the aerodynamic forces and knowledge of torsional rigidity. This is uh, feels basically the wind flatter. That is the, this is the vibration mode is like when the wind is coming on this side, there is a flattering mode of vibration has been takes place and due to this failure has been takes place. And this is uh, at that time, we have no idea about that. But now for this kind of flexible bridges, we have to go for wind tunnel test to know about this uh, flexural uh, or know about this flattering effect. So this is again a uh, floor deck in a symphony hall. This hall has been designed only for 250 persons sitting on a fixed sitting arrangement. But uh, somehow it has been used for a uh, 700 youths jumping on the floor in place of a in pace with a rock music. Naturally, the, there's a failure of your uh, flow due to the overloading. Next, uh, this is the collapse of a foot bridge recent in Mumbai. The connection of the cross steel member with the bottom core members fails. This is mainly due to the lack of maintenance, particularly the connections, although the structural audit has told that uh, it is a safe and required some minor repair. As the minor repair is not made, its structures basically fails. Next come to the fatigue failure. I think uh, this is one of the important aspects of your now steel design. In fact, if we go to the codal provisions in IS 800 2007, which is the recent code we are using, there is a provisions for fatigue failure, uh, or the, you have to check against fatigues. But before that, there is no fatigue uh, we do not consider any fatigue effect. Now, this is a 90-meter steel chimney, which is undergo fatigue cracks due to the vortex shedding detected at the base of the structures. Mostly the fatigue failure, if you see that uh, about 10% of the total failure, whatever you have seen in this, mainly 10% of the total failure is due to the fatigue failure. It is a progressive in nature and involves uh, basically the three stages. 
crack initiations at the point of stress concentration, that is where the stresses become maximum. Then there is a crack growth starts, crack propagates, and finally, ratchets. In welded steel structures, most of the fatty crack starts to grow from the welds rather than from the members. And IS-800, I can say that uh, most of the uh, uh, structures where you have to consider the fatigue and where you should not consider the fatigue stress that is given. This is uh, one of the important collapses, uh, impact, fire, and progressive failure. This is the twin tower. Everybody knows that. And this is the impact configuration of the two towers. The two planes has been crashed. And the direction of this uh, crashing has been shown in this figure. This is a structure is basically is a uh, tube in tube structures. The two rows of tubes has been provided, and these are connected with your lateral members. And these are the uh, prefabricated column unit for these erections of these uh, your members. Basically, due to this impact, some of the members fails, and also due to the heating effect, the uh, members strength has been reduced, and ultimately, most of the members fails, and ultimately it collapses. This is again an uh, example of a poor communications between the designer and the fabricator. This is an uh, walkway between the two buildings of a Hayat Residency uh, at Kansas City. You see that the two levels of floors, bottom level of uh, walkway and the top levels of walkway, it is connected. This uh, cross beams has been connected, top and bottom level, with a single rod with some knots and wassels. But uh, if you see that uh, this is the, as proposed, is a single rod, but when it is constructed, the bottom one, uh, it is basically it is divided into the two rods. The bottom uh, members has been connected with the top one with a rod, and the top one is connected with another rod. So naturally, the wassers or the knots has been designed, which is at the top levels, undergo double force. Instead of single force, it becomes a double force. You see these figures. Initially, it was designed for P, but when it is uh, actual practice, it becomes a 2P, because all the loads comes on the single uh, washer. So naturally, it fails. Again, the improper detailings uh, uh, due to this uh, Parlin connections, uh, you see that uh, we know that the uh, shear center of the parlins is from the wave, outside of the waves. So if we place this uh, in the type, one, type A, that is shear center is, uh, is basically the more than uh, in case of a, uh, in the first case, the shear center is less. In the second case, the shear center will be the more. So as the shear center is more, naturally the torsional effect will be the more. But uh, you have to think of that uh, in that case, this is the actual practice, but uh, if we think of the dust load, because in the case of a figure one, the dust load will be the more in that cases in the, compared to the second cases. So depending upon the situations, you have to make some arrangements and you have to increase some amount of torsional moment for the design. So at the end, I can say that uh, case studies are basically a source of understanding of your present state of technology and limitations. And the much improvement of our design concept has been possible from the study of your failures. And the adequate attention to be made on the subject of our, your design of steel structures in engineering education that I've already told you that at least you need a two semester course if this more is possible. Thank you. <laughs>